Good afternoon children of grade 11. Welcome to today's uh, English session. And in today's English session, I shall be taking up yet another uh, poetry. And uh, the name of the poetry is The Spider and the Fly. The Spider and the Fly. And it is written by Mary Botham Howitt. Mary Botham Howitt. So before going into the poetry, I shall discuss the very uh, discuss uh, a very brief history of uh, Mary Botham Howitt. So she was born in the year 1799, and uh, she breathed her last in the year 1888. She had education under a strict uh, Quaker father. In 1821, she got married to William Howitt. William Howitt was very sharp in literary works, and equally, Mary Botham also was sharp in literary works. So, both of them joined together and wrote nearly about 180 books. she had her own independent works and some of her independent works are sketches of natural history written in 1834 then she wrote birds and flowers and other country things in 1838 then she wrote strive and thrive in 1840 love and money 1843 and lastly she wrote the children's year 1847 the poem the spider and the fly Spider and the Fly is a very popular work of Mary Botham Howitt. is a very popular work of Mary Botham Howitt. Children, to make the may make may may make the theme understandable to you, I have just drawn the picture of a spider web, and by the side I have drawn the picture of a fly. this picture of spider and the fly gives us lot of uh, uh, valuable lessons to be learned so what valuable lesson does this picture tell us is that this world is full of people who are full of tricks who are full of tricks and at the same time there are people who are very innocent who fall a victim to the tricks of these cunning people so cunning people here is here is represented by the spider and the gullible that is the weak kind of people is here represented by the fly is represented by the fly so with this uh, a bit of information i would like to start the poem so this poem that is the spider and the fly it consists of seven stanzas so now let me start the first stanza the first stanza goes this way will you walk into my parlor will you walk into my parlor said the spider to the fly so here the the spider initiates the talk the spider initiates the talk so the spider initiates the talk by stating will you walk into my parlor what do you mean by the word parlor parlor means into its space into its space where the spider had uh, spider has uh, prepared its uh, uh, cobweb will you walk into my parlor said the spider to the fly the way into the parlor is up a winding winding stair is up a winding stair now the spider is telling oh fly will you walk up into my parlor will you walk up into my space and the spider says to the fly my place is just up a winding stair is just up a winding stair that is the spider says to the fly my place is just up the winding stair so if you come 
winding up this stair, you can find my place. You can find my place. And I have many pretty things to show when you are there. And the spider now tries to attract the fly by saying there are the, the, the spider says to the fly, there are many pretty things, many pretty things around which the spider is ready to show to the fly if the fly comes to the spider. Oh no no, said the little fly. But the little fly was a little cautious. It said, Oh no no, said the little fly. To ask me in vain. To ask me in vain. That is, the fly is telling to the spider, Your calling will all go waste. Because I am not prepared to come to your place. I am not prepared to come to your place. Now why? Why the fly is not prepared to go to the place of the spider? For who goes up your winding stair can never come down again. Now, the fly is very cautious. He tells the spider, Oh spider, if I come up to your place, up the winding stairs, then I will be caught by you. I will be caught by you and I can never come down again. I can never come down again. So, don't keep requesting me. Don't, don't try to attract me. Your, your efforts are all, uh, your efforts will go in vain. Your efforts will go in vain. Here what is the word vain? Vain means waste. Vain means waste. Worthless. So this is the explanation of the first stanza where the dialogue is initiated by the spider and uh, the fly listens to the dialogue of the spider and uh, it, it becomes very cautious. It is very cautious and it, 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 it is very much conscious about its precious life. So it doesn't want to get caught in the trap put by the spider. Stanza 2. Now I am coming to stanza 2. I am sure you must be weary. I am sure you must be weary. Dear, with the soaring up so high. Soaring up so high. I am sure you must be weary. Dear, with the soaring up so high. Now the spider is again and again trying to attract the uh, fly by talking in a sweeter manner. It says, it says, Oh fly, you must be very very tired flying up. You must be very very tired flying up. Dear, with the soaring up so high. So I am sure you must be very, uh, you must be weary. Dear, weary means you must be tired. Oh dear, now the spider is telling to the uh, fly, addressing it as dear, saying that dear, you must be very tired with soaring up so high. That is, you are trying to come up so high, so you must be very tired. You must be very tired. Will you rest upon my little bed? Will you rest upon my little bed? Now, what, what, now which is the bed here? The bed is a web, cobweb, spun by the spider. Now, now it says, the spider says to the fly, Oh fly, oh dear, you must be very very tired. So why don't you come and rest in my little bed? Why don't you come and rest in my little bed? Send the spider to the fly. Send the spider to the fly. Now, there are pretty curtains drawn around. There are pretty curtains drawn around. Curtains means the web spun by the spider is here referred to as curtain. Is referred to as curtain. So there are pretty curtains drawn around. There are pretty curtains drawn around. There are pretty curtains drawn around. The sheets are fine and thin. The sheets are fine and thin. That is the threads. Wo, I mean the threads spun by the spider here. Here is referred. Here is referred as sheets. Here it is referred as sheets. And it says they are fine and thin. They are very fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, and the spider is again trying to trying to attract the fly by saying that if, if the fly wishes to rest a while, rest a while, I will snugly tuck you in. Now the spider says, you oh fly, if you want to rest here on my beautiful cozy bed, then I will snug you in. I will snug you in means I will hold you tight. I will hold you tight. Here, I will hold you tight means what? When the fly gets caught into the web, then it, it cannot escape and it dies and it will die. So, and if you like to rest a while, I will snugly tuck you in. Snugly means tightly, I will tuck you in. Tuck you in means get you inside. Oh no no, said the fly. Oh no no, said the fly. Fly, but still the fly is very very conscious. It is very careful and it is saying no no no. 
and what does it say further oh no no said the fly for i have often heard it said now the fly says it has heard many a times it has heard many a times what it had heard many a times that let us see they never 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 wake again who sleep on your, upon your bed they never never wake again now the fly very cautiously says that one who gets caught up in its in its in the, in the bed of the spider will never wake up will never wake up means what he will never come out alive will die so they never never wake up again who sleeps upon your bed who sleeps upon your bed so children i hope that these two sentences are very very simple but the lessons that we learn from these stanzas are very very valuable and what is the lesson that we have that we can learn from this poem once again i would like to uh, uh, reiterate and tell you that this world is made up of two types of people one cunning and uh, one absolutely innocent so here the cunning people who are full of tricks is being represented by the spider and uh, the innocent people who fall a victim to the tricks of the cunning people is represented by the fly represented by the fly so this clearly shows that even if you are innocent we have to be very careful we have to be very careful and we have to we have to understand people we have to understand people before we take any action we take any action so for today children i would end up with these two stanzas thank you very much